Hey friends, it's Leslie. Welcome back to Holistic Health at Home. I meant to record this video right after my last, but a family emergency came up. Long story short, everyone is okay, and I am back to talk to you about how to properly break a fast. Regardless of what kind of solid food vacation you've been on or plan to be on, how you start and break a fast can make all the difference. Let's talk about it. We are both going to start and break a fast the same way, on fruit. Fruit is the easiest food for our bodies to digest, and it's also the most hydrating foods with its rich water content. As we prepare our bodies for a fast, we are in essence, as we eat fruit, preparing our bodies and giving it one final good clean and scrub with its astringent properties, really pulling on the mucous membranes and the lymph as it moves through our system. And it also helps to scrub the intestines. And because fruit is so easy for our bodies to digest, it is much less likely to get stuck in our system like heavier foods will right before a fast. Whenever we are on a fast, we are in essence giving our bodies a break from digesting solid food. Our bodies burn about 65% of our energy simply digesting the solid foods that we give it. And imagine when you are fasting, that 65% of the energy that your body would normally be spending on digesting your food is now freed up to clean, repair, and regenerate cells and tissue. A general rule of thumb for fasting is to break most fasts with one to two days of eating fruit for every three days of fasting. Now with any protocol, always listen to your body, honor your body where it is, and give your body what it asks for. Now we should absolutely still be moving our bowels while fasting, but generally speaking, it is uh, much less frequently than you would move your bowels while eating solid food. When we're breaking a fast, we are really challenging the bowels to suddenly wake up and start processing solid food again after having some time off. With that said, it is that much more important to give your body very easy to digest foods, foods that are very hydrating so they naturally have moisture and water content to help move the food throughout the bowels, especially after they've been asleep for a while. Now, if you have been on any kind of lengthy fast, it is highly recommended that you work with a certified detoxification specialist or other practitioner that is well-versed and knowledgeable in fasting, in various types of fasting. It is important to always, again, listen to your body, honor your body, and not push your body past limits that you feel are safe or not safe for you. Again, everyone's journey is unique. We all have unique lymphatic congestion and genetic weakness. And if you are just starting out in this lifestyle, if you are just brand new to the principles of detoxification, take your time when it comes to fasting. Uh, many types of fasting are very aggressive. And if you have an individual that is highly acidic and very dehydrated, oftentimes fasting can be way too aggressive and I feel like many of the healing crises that can arise can often be more detrimental than they are helpful and you can also run the risk of the individual uh, not having a good experience, a good experience or misunderstanding what their body is doing. And then they're just turned off of the whole thing and they don't want to return to it. Friends, this is the last thing that we want. In my opinion, it is much better to take some time, take several months, take a solid year, just hydrating and alkalizing your body. Take some time to really increase the amount of raw fruits and vegetables that you're eating. So you are hydrating your body. So you are giving your cells proper hydration. So you are alkalizing your body and really starting to change your internal chemistry. At that point, whenever you start to see real lymph movement and drainage, when you start to see proper kidney filtration, that would be a great time to start experimenting with some shorter fasts. Because at that point, your lymph is hydrated, it's moving, and it's ready to purge out of the body. At that point, you can afford to get a little more aggressive 
but don't push yourself, friends. Again, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. As you are incorporating fresh fruit back into your diet after breaking your fast, remember to continue to stay hydrated. Fruit is naturally hydrating, but suddenly you are giving your body solid food and your bowels now have to start working again. So we need some extra hydration to help move that food throughout the bowels and out of the body. So whether that is continuing to hydrate on your fresh water, if you were doing a water fast, continue to hydrate on your fresh fruit juices, if you were doing a juice fast, um, whatever you need to do and what you feel is best to properly hydrate your body at that time, make sure that you are still giving your body plenty of fluids to help move that food throughout your system. Now that we've discussed how to physically transition and break a fast, let's quickly talk about how to mentally break a fast. Your body just went through an intense period of cleaning, repairing, and regenerating new cells and tissue. Take a moment to just be amazed at what your body has accomplished. Thank yourself for taking out the time and the energy for remaining disciplined for remaining motivated and inspired, for inspiring others. To recap today's video, we are going to both start and break a fast on fruit. It is the easiest food for us to digest. It is also the most hydrating. So get whatever fruit you are the most excited about. Make sure it is properly ripe. Make sure it is juicy. And that will help keep your cells and all of your tissues hydrated and alkalized after you have spent so much time and energy cleaning out your body. It is best to stay away from very heavy, congesting, acidic foods, foods that are very gluey and sticky, foods that will leave a lot of residue in the GI tract, foods that are very mucus forming. After spending time clearing out that mucus from the body, the last thing we want to do is add some more junk on top of it. Depending on how acidic or dehydrated you are, there can be some very real blowback to incorporating heavy, protein and fatty foods too soon after breaking a fast. So again, it is very important to break your fast with juicy fruit. And if you have been on any kind of lengthy fast, take even more time transitioning to other foods. Spend uh, over a week if you need to on all fruit and then gradually incorporate your, your vegetables, your salads, um, some green drinks and smoothies. But always listen to your body, honor your body. If you want to attempt a longer fast, make sure that you are properly hydrated and alkalized beforehand and always seek out the, the work, the help, the advice of a specialist or other individual that is knowledgeable and well-versed in fasting to help you along your healing journey. And be sure to take time to celebrate yourself and to thank your body for all of the hard work, for all of the cleaning, and for all of the healing that has taken place. Friends, I want to thank each of you for joining me on this Juice Feast extravaganza this month. It has been incredibly fun, rewarding, and humbling. All I want to say is I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate the hard work that you're doing, the dedication that you have, the wonderful examples that you are setting for individuals in your circles, in your areas of the world. Well, that is it for today's video, friends, and this officially wraps up my spring cleaning juice feast. I will be bringing you one new video a week, so you can expect to see me next week with my take on how to make Dr. Morse's Heal All Tea. If you're looking for any kind of assistance on your healing journey, please send me a message on my website at holtox.com. That is H-O-L-T-O-X.com. I'm Leslie, sending you love and help.